Holy cow, did it get cold quick, which means winter's right around the corner and I'm not ready. I haven't had enough summer yet. I've got a lot of things to do before then, so let's get after it. Well, good morning. Welcome back here to the shop. My name is Brett, and like I said in the intro, boy, did it get cold here in Western Pennsylvania over the weekend. You know, last week I was in shorts and a t-shirt. This, this week I'm breaking out the jeans and I'm going to have to start getting out my long sleeve tees and everything and getting ready for winter, which brings me up to uh, this topic. I don't like to show you all some areas of the shop. You know, if you notice when I film, I'm usually up against my clamp rack or something. It's because, I, you know, I've got walls here that are unfinished. My back wall back here is always such a mess and I'm always embarrassed by that. And one of these days on the channel, I'd like to uh, rebuild this, build new cabinets, upper and lower cabinets, and get that looking a lot more, you know, more professional, I guess. Same thing with my paint booth back here, my paint area. It's always such a mess. But my back room, that's what I'm going to work on here today. You know, over the weekend, I kept thinking it'd be nice to put a fire in the fireplace back here. Now, the shop here, I put radiant floor heating in the shop. And I don't like to turn that all on until at least the end of October. And I may have to rethink that and get that fired up here. But before I even do any of that, I've got to go back and I've got to tackle that back room back here. And I'm going to show you that. And again, I, I don't like to show you too many areas, but I thought, oh, what the heck. So this is my back area back here. That's, of course, where my powder coating oven is at. And it's always just, a you know, well, I shouldn't say it's always a mess, but it's summertime. This all kind of this area becomes a catch all. And especially this back room back here, you know, we bring our deck furniture in when it's raining and all of that stuff but it looks like we're going to be closing things up anyways so i really need to focus and get this back room cleaned up and get it organized and then i can get a fire going in the uh the wood stove back here and try to get this shop and get this building warmed up here a little bit it's not too bad right now but it's a bit chilly in here you know a few hours at this i can get this taken care of get everything put away so bear with me while I get that done. The other thing I need to do too is I really need to take my K5 Blazer out and get it put away for the winter time. I really didn't get to drive it all that much this year. And here we are, you know, it's October and well, it's time to get that put away and we can get that pulled out again next spring. I like to put it in here for the summer and then uh, winter time, I like to keep this bay open. And I can bring my wife's car in here and that way she doesn't have to go outside in the cold every morning when she leaves for work. She can just come in and get in a nice warm vehicle. Yeah, lots to do here today and then uh, we'll get this all taken care of and then we can get back to work on our little horse.
Well, things sure look a lot better back here, and that's a big check off the old to-do list before winter sets in. We have a nice fire started. We can get the shop all warmed up. That means let's get back out and get back to work on our little Keeland racehorse. Good. I'm glad to have that done. That back room, that always becomes a real challenge in the uh, fall to get cleaned out and get it all set up for winter. I've got a nice fire in the wood stove, so the shop is warming up. It's comfortable in here. So let's get back to work on our little thoroughbred rocking horse. Uh, now, a couple of things I wanna work on before we can get this into the paint booth. There's not much to do. We've gotta revisit back here in the rump. I wanna add a little bit of the line here to divide the cheeks back here. We're gonna add a little bit of detail on the rear and the front legs. I wanna go back in and revisit and add a little bit of carving detail, just a little bit of slight, like a little bit of the muscle line around the muzzle and some things, and maybe drop these jaw back a little bit. They're, I think they're a little bit pronounced, so I might take a little bit off of there. There's really not much more to do. It's just really, we're just gonna be fine tuning and taking a few things you know, off here and there and just continue to sand. Now I did have a suggestion on the comment side of the channel last week and thought maybe back here, back behind the withers and going back to the rump, that it was a little bit flat back here. And I, I agree. And, and again, this horse, this is something that, um, you know, is gonna evolve. You know, this is our first one, and on the Rocking Horse Makers page, you know, I've been posting some pictures and getting some feedback on this, and there's a lot of great feedback from people, and overwhelming people really like the direction it's going and what I'm doing, but really this is, at this point, it is what it is with this particular horse. So our first one, I think it's looking fantastic. Now we'll do a second one, of course, a third one. Hopefully we'll be doing a whole bunch of these. And we're gonna slowly let these just kind of evolve as we continue to build more and more of these. But again, back to Ann's comment, I agree. I think we need to go back in and just kind of revisit back in here behind the withers, take a little bit out, make this kind of this rump come up a little bit and we'll, we'll do that and then sand it down, step back and take a look at it again. The other thing that I had mentioned to her too is what I'm kind of rolling around in my head and what I'm picturing is now we've got a mane to put on, we have our little saddle we're gonna put on too. So that's gonna kind of cover some of this up. So I'm kind of thinking about that too as I'm carving and working this, that some of this is gonna get covered up. So maybe, and again, we won't know until we get to the end of this, but maybe some of this will just kind of start to work. It's not that we're covering things up, but we just want everything to flow and we want everything to work when this is all said and done. So yeah, let's go ahead. Let's get set up at the front door there. I've got my jaw horse ready to go. I've got everything plugged in. So let's head over there and we're gonna work here. We're gonna take some of this down behind the withers a little bit more, and then uh, we'll just continue to fine tune it and get it ready for the paint booth. And there's not much to do. Now, as I'm setting this up in my jaw horse here, I thought I'd also add, uh, you know, some comments. People are commenting about the music that I add to the channel here and to my videos. So I hear you, and I think what I'm gonna to try to do this time around, and we'll see how it goes, is I'm gonna I'm gonna really try hard to just not really add any any music background to this video. We'll see how it goes. You can let me know what you all think of it. Uh, you know, I get it. You know, I'm I'm not a big fan of the music either. I guess it goes back to when I was younger in my younger days. I used to work at a little radio station and I was always afraid of dead air. And so that, I guess, is kind of part of why I, I always put music because I'm not talking. So I just feel like there needs to be some sort of filler there. So I just go right to the music. So a lot of you have said you don't like it. So let's try this. We're going to see how it goes. Now, of course, I had to add a little bit of music at the beginning there to fill in where I did my time lapse. But from here on out, we're going to try, you know, just you're just going to hear the tools. You're going to get to hear, you know, yours truly talk. So we'll see how it goes. And you all can let me know if you like the music or if you don't. Again, if you don't like the music, you like this. We'll go from there. But uh, yeah, so again, going back to Anne's 
comment on on the channel and you know feedback that i was getting from the uh, rocking horse makers on facebook we're going to just take a little bit more down here and then i'm just going to start to sand with my palm sander and with my sandiflex we'll just start working this down we'll try to dish this out here where the saddle's going to go and yeah and then we'll just you know like i said we'll just continue to sand and try to fine tune I'm going to turn on my air purifier up above me so it might get a little bit loud. I apologize. But that's what's running in the background if you hear it. This is my medium core cut saw on a four inch grinder. So I'm, I'm done with my extra cores. We're just going to work with the medium cores here. And I'm just going to lightly touch it. This is my 80 grit on my Sandiflex.
and we took that down a little bit. It feels good. Now you can see here where I took it down a little bit too thin and I opened up right here where the top body block meets the middle body block, but no big deal. You know, we'll fix that. I can, I can fill that with my epoxy. I'll fill that when I do the eyes. You know, our little saddle's gonna go over there so you'll never see it. So what that means is, what I'll do is I'll make my notes and the next one, the second one we make, we just know now that we need to make the middle body box, you know, those sides, we need to make those a little bit thicker to take up, you know, a little bit of that. We can probably even make the top part of our body just a little bit thicker as well. Then we won't have that problem. But again, these are things that I know is gonna happen and I'm kind of prepared for it. I was kind of hoping I would get by. I was just really just kind of touching it and you know we went through so you know but again we'll fix that no big deal we'll move on so let's go ahead we'll work on the back end here let's work on our rear legs we'll get those all done then we'll work our way to the front back over to the bench we'll set the eyes and you know finish sanding but he's looking good not much more to do So let's go ahead on the back here. Let's add this line back here. I guess we can call it the butt crack back here on the rump of our horse. Now to do this, I usually use my circular saw. I've tried different things. I've gone in with gouges and everything. And what happens is it seems to kind of get too separated, too far apart. And even though we've got a tail that's gonna go down here and cover a lot of this, I just wanted a really simple line back here that we can then shape and make it look more, um, for, for the most part, realistic. So I found that just using my circular saw with a thin curved blade does a really good job of doing that. We don't have to go in very deep, and then we can finish this up with the Sandiflex, and it'll round all of that. And, you know, if we need to, we can get down in here with different gouges, because I don't think with this small of a horse we can get down in too far. But I just kind of made a line. I'm just eyeballing it, looking to see where the center is. And we'll just go in and just add a little bit of a line. Something like that. That ought to work. We'll just go in here and finish this with a, you know, just our straight gouge. We only went maybe an eighth of an inch deep, if that, and that was plenty. Probably even use a razor knife to go in and kind of finish this up underneath here. There. Good. Now this is my Santa Flex. This has 120 grit on it. And I'm gonna, the rotation is pulling up. So that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to pull up here a little bit. Take a little bit of sandpaper and just see if we can ease those edges over a little bit. 
And that's really all there is to it. Now when I'm using, when I'm doing this with a, with a small, large, you know, medium horse, it's a lot easier. Again, you can get down in, you can set your saw and go quite a bit deeper and you can really make this area back here, you can really define it. But with this little guy and knowing that the tail is back here going to cover this up. And that's the other little bit here that I'm kind of working out in my head and we won't know until we get to the end and finish everything. This tail is going to fall. It'd be nice to try to wire it so that it sticks out a little bit or come up with an idea, you know, a way to do that. Since we're trying to make this horse appear like it's running, even though you know, this is completely unnatural for a horse. It doesn't run this this way. So this one, you know, this time around, we may just let the tail just kind of hang. And maybe down the road, we'll kind of come up with a different way of maybe wiring that horse, the tail, wiring it straight out or something. I, I don't know. But we'll we'll figure that out down the road. And if you all have some ideas... I hate to do a wooden tail, but we could do a wooden tail with a with a real mane. So that's not, you know, out of the realm of possibilities. We could certainly entertain that idea and see what it looks like. But if you all have an idea too, let me know. It looks pretty good. Let that go. Good. Now let's go in here. I'm just going to use my uh, sanding wheel on my drill and I just want to clean up back in here and some of this. We can come in here and get this little bit of glue and work this around. Kind of define this back of this leg just a little bit more. Bring those lines out a little bit.
I like that. Really like these sanding wheels. I, I've said that a lot of times. You've heard me say it a lot on this channel. I really do like them. And it's fun to just do something and see it just kind of appear before your your eyes. Now we'll hit this with our Santa Flex with 120 and soften that. Funny how when you do that just after a couple of just a couple of seconds with the sandal flex, it just softens those lines, gives just a nice shadow line. Now, when we paint this and airbrush everything, you're not really going to notice those a whole lot until you see it, you know, in different areas like uh, the way the light hits it. Then you'll see probably some of these lines, but they're just nice little. I like to call them shadow lines. Now let's go ahead. I think that's good enough for over here in our jaw horse. Let's take this out of the clamp, go back over to the bench, and we can kind of lay it on its side, do a little bit more sanding, you know, and again, just keep adding and fine tuning on this, and we can go ahead and get the eye set. Over here on the bench, I went ahead and I just clamped it down lightly with my quick clamp over here. What I thought I'd do is just add maybe a few little lines, you know, in here, just to kind of give them that little bit of like the stretch mark. So let's just use a little gouge. We'll just see how this looks. I'm not gonna go deep.
something like that. Kind of going with some sandpaper. Just soften this a little bit. And it's one of those little details. Again, the bridle's going to go over this. You're not going to see a whole lot of this. And that's what I was saying at the beginning. That, you know, once we put the tack on, the saddle, the bridle, everything, you know, we want everything to kind of work together as a whole. Then we can step back and take a look at it. Not sure I like I like it. Nice thing is we're not deep. I'm just going real real light so I can sand these out pretty much. It's one of those things you don't know until you try it. Let's see if you're gonna like it. And again, I mean our bridle is gonna go over a lot of this. You're not even really gonna see it. It's kind of a waste of time to do this but i was curious to see what it looks like and i think the way this is gonna shape up and, and work out is it's almost kind of like here in this front area here where i'm just gonna leave a few of the little lines I think it's the way this is going to work out. <sighs> I don't know. I'll do the other side. Again, this might be really good to use my little needle files.
Well, let me go ahead. I'm going to continue off camera. I'm just going to continue to work on this and get this all sanded. There's no sense you all just kind of watching me uh, sand with sandpaper. It's not that big a deal. If I come up with something or if I do something kind of unique, I'll bring you back in and we'll, we'll talk about it and go over it. But I think for the most part, I'm just going to go over this here for the next, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, really, and clean up around the hooves. Just kind of sand that, sand back behind here a little bit, and just kind of give this a good once over. And then we'll go ahead, get the eye set, and really, then it's off to the paint booth, and we can go ahead and get our first coat of primer put on. Well, I spent about, literally about 15 minutes, really kind of going over this horse with some 120 grit sandpaper and cleaning up around the hooves and cleaning up some of these little bit of a shadow lines all the way around. And really, there wasn't much to see. So, uh, you know, that's really all I did. And I think it's just about ready for the paint booth. So let's go ahead and move forward and we will um, set the eyes and get the eyes set. Another little detail is I kind of left a little bit of these lines, these carved lines there around the mouth you're really not going to see them again the bridle is going to come down around here so i doubt that you're even going to see them i'm not sure if i like them or not maybe that's something i'll continue to play with down the road as we you know build more of these little guys i'll kind of play with them a little bit more but it, it just seems that the size of this a lot of this kind of gets lost in the carving and it just doesn't quite make sense, at least to me. So, but again, I'm not gonna say we're not gonna continue to play with it. Just like these eyes, I like the sculpt an eyelid when I do my eyes and being that these are so small, let me get my glasses. Okay. Yeah, being that these are so small, I'm not sure what kind of a, of a lid we can do. actually not bad there. This is normally where I'd put a little bit of music. But I'm going to refrain from that. Just kidding. You know, and the nice thing too, when I don't add as much music, it's a lot easier to edit. So it really helps me out if I don't add a lot, you know, a bunch of that music. It generally takes me pretty much my entire Sunday to edit a video. And that is even during the week, because I'll, I'll do some recording, I'll work on things during the week, go up and unload it, and start building the video. 
So I kind of work on it all week long and then Sunday I go back in and finish everything. But it takes a while. And a lot of that time is adding the music. So we'll see how this see how this sounds, see how it looks. You guys can let me know if you like it with the music or if you want a little bit of music or if you are okay with listening to me breathe. <laughs> this is Quickwood Epoxy too, and all the links are in the description to you know a lot of the tools that I use on the channel. So all you have to do is click on the description of the of the video and there's an entire page there a whole bunch of information all the links all of the tools everything that I use is all on there so you can locate it but this quickwood epoxy boy I really like I like it now JB Weld I've talked about this before JB Weld makes a version of this you can buy it at Home Depot or some hardware stores I don't like it and I've gone back and forth with JB Weld it just doesn't perform like the actual Quickwood. And this I normally like to let sit for a good 12 hours so overnight. So this is really, this is the last thing I'm gonna do here for the day. And I'll go up and edit a little bit. And then tomorrow we'll come into the shop and really we're into the paint booth and we'll get our first coat of primer put on. Good. It looks good. A little bit of sanding on that, and I think we got it. We'll fix our little spot that we went through. Good, that should work. I will set this aside to dry tonight and tomorrow. First thing, we'll be able to go into the paint booth and I'll probably go over it one more time with some sandpaper 
because of course we have better light in the paint booth than we do out here in the shop so i'll probably give it another once over and then uh yeah we can mix up some primer and we can start primary good we'll see you tomorrow well, it's a new day here in the shop, and we've got our little guy in the paint booth. We're ready to go ahead and put our first coat of primer on. Now, I spent about a half an hour this morning going over it once again with 120 grit sandpaper. I sanded around the eyes. I went ahead and I taped the eyes off. I fixed our little area here that we kind of touched and went through the wood a little bit, so that's all fixed. And uh, yeah, so he's ready to go. So let me go ahead and I'll get my mask on. I'll turn the fan on and we'll spray our first coat of primer. There we go. Our first coat of primer is on. Looks good. It's to be expected. You know, you've got the grain that's raised. It kind of looks ugly. I always, you know, when you put that first coat of primer down on one of these horses or anything that I work on, it always looks awful. And it's just because the grain raises and it looks, you know, terrible. But we'll sand it all down. Once this dries, I'll give this about four hours or so to really dry good. I'll come back in and sand it almost down to bare wood again and then I'll primer it again and then again I'll just let it uh, dry and then you know it's just a process you just primer it sand it primer it sand it and then we'll be ready to go later on uh, this evening with the base coat that's probably one of the last things I'm going to do here in the shop before I leave is I'll put the base coat down this is going to be a little bit of a like a brown horse we're going to do black socks on it and a little bit of highlight and, uh, but that's going to be next week. So when we get into the shop next week, this is already going to have its base coat on it. We can jump right in and we'll start airbrushing. And really, this week is going to be crunch week. We're down to, you know, painting it, clear coating, staining the stand, and then clear coating that. And then we're on the final assembly. So really, this is going to be the final week of this guy. And we're going to get to see what it looks like. So it's pretty exciting. 
Well, once again, I really appreciate you all hanging out with me here at the shop. And again, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button, of course, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I post a new video. You can also check me out on Instagram and I'm on Facebook. Also, don't forget to check out on Facebook, the Rocking Horse Makers, Rocking Horse International. And of course, I keep forgetting the good folks at the Rocking Horse Shop in England. And that is where I get a lot of my supplies in the saddle that we'll be doing next week. So don't forget to check those folks out as well. Well, again, I really appreciate you following along, especially watching this little guy come together. And we'll see you here at the shop next week. Happy carving. Take care.